your restrooms and stuff like that where you're it's not included yeah, so in the, the one. recirculation and support spaces where in this case we, we try to pull those out and if, if you go through that huge binder there's still rich rooms there's there's staff toilets there's student toilets and all those rooms have been planned for within each section so in the academic area so student restrooms are accounted for in the athletic area so students are accounted for etc and so there's restrooms i'm sorry okay yeah. all right thank you thank you very much for the presentation i just wanted to make a few points that were already answered something that mr uh, rosenthal just mentioned which is the overcrowdedness um, that's something that's been on my mind i'm glad to hear that you pulled some of those spaces out of it that makes a lot more sense um i believe we touched on this as well but just holding campuses accountable um, to make sure they're properly using the spaces and the furniture that's a big interest of mine i i want to make sure that we're doing that with fidelity if we're going to be spending the money on it and uh, we're doing a child nutrition audit now, and I want to make sure that uh, the findings from that will be updated, and I know that they, they will, um, in our new educational specifications, because I'd, I'd like to think that that's something that we could do a little bit different. I, I know that we've been doing child nutrition the same for some time, and I, I know that there's got to be a more efficient way, and I, it could be reflected in the ed, ed specs. So... Thank you. I appreciate it. We were we will now convene in closed session. Sorry. Are we already there? Next is our emergency declaration purchase update. Excuse me. Dr. Dupree. I'll pass it off to Mr. Perez. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Burdine. So I'm pleased to uh, let you all know that this is the final report that I will be bringing to you all. Uh, all contracts are final, uh, and since the initial report, we had a total reduction of a little over a million three from our initial uh, estimate that uh, you know we brought in, which was a little over a year ago, back in September. And I'll answer any questions you may have. Ms. Elgar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the presentation. Uh, let give us the update. So I do remember at the last update, someone asked a question around insurance and those kinds of things. Have we gotten all that taken care of? Um, um, I know we were doing insurance as well as um, something else. I can't remember who was who was that asked it the last time when we had an update. FEMA insurance claims and did we get any a lot of that money back or is that, did all that come from contingency dollars just kind of an update financial update we can we can give you more information but we've received a lot of information uh, a lot of revenue already from an insurance perspective we're going through the FEMA process it's a very tedious process especially when they uh, change adjusters on us and so uh, um, we're still we're still going through that process but overall, though, I mean, what we received in grants from the federal, from the from the feds, in addition to the state comp funding, has been in excess of what our expenses were. Mm -hmm. okay. Mrs. James. Thank you, Mr. Rodine. I just wanted to say thank you to Mr. Perez and really to all the staff, Mr. Bassett and Dr. Dupree particularly, because the um, the foresight to have the emergency meeting to start organizing the repairs after our first series of tornadoes I think really got us started off in the right direction and got us ahead of the um, ahead of the curve in terms of getting these repairs done so I realize it's been over a year and or a year since our very first one of these updates and that's a long time that it took to get everything everything taken care of but I just wanted to say I appreciate your diligence in that and I know as Mr. Bassett said we still have to uh, chase after the FEMA um, paperwork and uh, and claims but I just want to commend the leadership for having that emergency meeting having the foresight to get things going because uh, that resolution really, I think, made a huge difference in our ability to get these repairs done. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. James. Dr. Dupree. Well, in, in, in that regard, Mrs. James, I was going to also, I was in express appreciation to the board 
and the president at the time, Kristen Tassan, because she actually asked me, is there anything we need to do? And I jumped on it, and I, but the whole board was willing to meet on a Saturday afternoon following emergency protocols to call that meeting, and I regularly celebrate and brag on our board when I talk to other superintendents, even this weekend with other superintendents, I was telling them our board had the foresight to give us the authority and the trust that that represents um, to allow us to execute has saved the district probably millions of dollars, certainly got our schools repaired, remediated, and kids back in school efficiently and effectively. And so I really appreciate the board's trust and foresight in joining us in, in accepting that responsibility to, to move quickly. And Oscar, of course, led the way with Carolina and his whole team. They did a remarkable job of executing. So I really appreciate all the support the board provided and the staff. Thank you, Dr. Dupree. Something that I'm proud of is I, I noticed that 20% of the contractors were from the Small Business Enterprise Program. So I, I think that's great. Thank you all. Mm. Mr. Rice, did you have a comment? We will now convene in closed session under the Texas Open Meetings Act, Chapter 551, and those sections listed in the agenda and for the purpose of private consultation with the board's attorney on any or all subject matters authorized by law. We are now convened in closed session. <laughs>